For the ACoin, which is our cryptocurrency, uh, we want to be able to utilize that everywhere. We're currently beta testing right now in Kenya, which is doing amazingly well. Um, we will be launching that within the next 90 days as an official cryptocurrency throughout Kenya and eventually will one day become hopefully a currency to be used in Uganda as well. Um, as you know, the ACoin is a little bit different from the average currency because it's not like the local currency where when you leave Uganda, you can't really cash it in for fiat currency. The crypto allows you to be able to use it globally. And ACoin will be one of those platforms, no matter where you go, you can be able to take your finances with you, invest with you, but it will be the heart of what you created here in Uganda. So we do want to be able to implement ACoin in Uganda, along not only with the city, but within the normal population one day to come as well. With all the resources in the world that's been used to develop every country and we haven't been able to develop ourselves, is an interesting question. Why are we failing? Um, one thing I've realized is that as Africans, we don't come together. That's number one. Number two, we don't trust each other. And number three, we're always competing and we're never in a position to unite, not realizing that if me and my brother join forces, we're two times better than we are as alone. If you look at the Jewish community, they have the least population in the whole world, but yet they control the whole world. It's because they unite, they come together. There's no coincidence that the United States is so respected globally and is the smallest continent. It's the United States. They come together. Now let's take it even a little further. If you calculate 30, 40 years ago, in the Middle East, they wasn't as powerful as they are today until they created the United Emirates. When you come together, you're a lot stronger. It's harder to defeat you. And it puts you in a better position because everybody can utilize those resources to get further. We're helping each other. We're giving each other knowledge. We're supporting every aspect of thought that can take you to the next level when you come together. So the biggest link that's the weakest for Africans is unity. The moment we decide to come together, we will be unstoppable. And I think that's the reason why we've been failing all these years. There's no reason why I, can, I have to get a visa to come to Uganda when I'm from Senegal. Why is that? Why can't we travel freely throughout the continent like everyone else? If you go through Europe, any country in Europe can go to any place in Europe without having, all you need is a basic ID or a passport. You mean we can't do that in Africa? We just need to come together and understand the value that we have as people as one. But other than that, brother, it's going to be a challenge. We're going to be fighting this for hundreds of years until we realize that unity is the only thing that's stopping us from being great. Um, well, me, my choice is really based on potential. You know, when I look at the potential of all the places in Africa from a touristic standpoint, I believe Uganda has one of the biggest potentials. I believe Senegal has one of the biggest potentials. I believe Ghana has one of the biggest potentials. You know, I believe Ethiopia has one of the biggest potentials. It's, it's certain countries that just have huge potential and it's less threatening in many, many ways. And I think when you look at it from that standpoint, it makes it easy to make a decision because through that potential, you can grow something that's viable. Uh, and Uganda is one of those places when you, just from my visit here, it's so much about Uganda I never knew even existed. It's, it's a certain welcome that I never knew Uganda even had. When you look at how Uganda has been promoted and how Ugandans have been promoted internationally, you would be scared to death to come to Uganda. <laughs> all they tell you is about the time frame of Idi Amin and all the things that happened. They don't tell you about what I just saw. And I'm determined to expose that. So I want people to understand how beautiful Uganda is. And the best way to do it is to build my city here. That's actually a very, very good question. Uh, that was always a thought for me, because I always felt that corruption was the one thing that uh, stopped Africa from growing. People don't realize how much corruption kills a country. And that was one of the biggest reasons why I decided that we're gonna do and put ACoin within the city because it creates a system of transparency through the blockchain. You can't cheat the blockchain. You can't lie to the blockchain. You can't 
create any forgeable documents or anything through the blockchain. It opens the information up to everyone there. So you're forced to be completely honest. And that alone is gonna change the game for Africa the moment blockchain is adapted into the country. So that, and you're 100% correct, you know, it's always been a problem. It's not just Africa. It's a problem in a lot of places, but the key is to get it set and positioned to where it's not an issue anymore. You know, because no one can sit here and tell me that the U.S. is not, you know, more corrupt than Africa. They just have more finances to hide the corruption. You know, <laughs> that's it. But corruption exists everywhere. That's not, if you spend too much time on corruption, you never get anywhere. The key is the people so they don't have to be corrupt. And I think that's the goal for us. We don't care about the corruption that exists, but the goal is to power more people or enough people to where corruption won't matter because people are all eating and everyone's feeding their families. Thank you. Honorable Dr. Chris, you want to answer the, the other part of the question? Build Uganda, how will the Ugandans benefit? Please. Let me, let me add to that uh, quick. Um, like the minister said, you know, there's to be a lot of direct and indirect impact as to how Uganda will benefit. Uh, we will be having some professionals that we plan to fly into Uganda that can train the locals. And I think one of the things that we miss out in major countries is the access of information. And we need to be properly trained, not only just in uh, construction, but also management of the property and then maintenancing of the properties. So we want to make sure that every piece of every part of every sector is covered, but we want to be able to utilize and only utilize the locals, which is the Ugandans. But clearly, we need to make sure that the Ugandans are properly trained to properly do the jobs as well, too. So we want to be able to continue to provide more than enough jobs for the people in the surrounding areas. And then we get even deeper into the impact because the idea of each city, we will have an entertainment district. I know there's millions of entertainers here in Uganda that don't have access to proper recording studios, proper film studios. This we plan to provide within the city in the entertainment district. And then we have a district, which is the medical district, which is a 10,000 bed hospital for the locals in case of any sicknesses, any viruses, any basic traumas, you got a place to go to properly be you know, treated. Instead of having to fly all the way to France or all the way to Dubai, you can stay home and be treated properly with all the latest equipment. And then you have the business district for all the entrepreneurs that's in the city that have their own jobs or want to create jobs or create businesses. This is the business district that allows you to get proper loans to start your own business. And we'll also have teams there that actually will help you set up your business properly with the right licensing, the right paperwork, the right everything to be able to be successful in it. Then we also have the uh, educational district, which is the district where we're putting four universities within the Akon City. We have a partnership with Stanford University. We have a partnership with uh, Berkeley University for Music. We have a partnership with MIT, and then we have a partnership with Stanford. So you have not only law, but you have business, you have IT, and you have music. So now you don't have to fly all the way to the United States to go to university at Berkeley when you can do it right here in Uganda. You know, so the idea is to make sure that everything that you can utilize for your day-to-day -day life and everything that allows you to be able to be the best at what you are will have those elements within the city to help you become that. So these are all the great opportunities that Ugandans will benefit from. And now there will be people from other countries that's closer that may want these same benefits. You know, someone from Rwanda may want to fly there for school or someone from Kenya want to come, you know, to the educational district and, you know, take on law or whatever the case. But at least you guys will be the hub for the surrounding areas for those opportunities. So there's a lot outside of education and, and employment that would be beneficial to you guys. Very good. Thank you very um, much, Mr. Akon. On that note... I have a, a question, please. Mm. Here, Who? Here. One or two questions. Leon Senyange, CGTN. Um, very, very insightful things there that you're talking about. And with the launch of the Akon City in 2018, um, I would like to know, probably from your own perspective, how much of a drawback the 2020 and still uh, occurring COVID-19 pandemic has affected the ambitions of uh, 
what you are setting out to do for Africa in terms of uh, generation of uh, uh, resources, the investors you plan on talking to. Let's face it, everybody has been hit economically. So has it in any way affected you? That's my first question. My second one entirely is you have painted a, a picture of a heavenly city uh, in Kampala, in Uganda. Uh, presumably that would be called speculative urbanization, where you're going to create things that are here for Ugandan who is here. Now that presumably, my understanding, widens the gap between the rich and the poor. The affordability on how somebody here can actually access this city, regardless of the employment that can be set in. Africa is trying to move to a situation where we narrow that gap. How then does this Akon city address a matter of that nature? Nice. So let me ask you a second question first. So the question, if I'm correct, and correct me if I'm wrong, how do you put a city that's here for people that's here? Correct? <laughs> This is the problem right here. What makes us here? Why aren't we here? You do know that we're the reason why the people that's here are here. So it's like, it's the mind state. And I think the mentality of us as a people, we already believe that we're not worth what we're worth. I know for sure we're worth way more than what people look at us to be because their idea and their goal is to keep us to think that we're nothing so they can continue to be something. Without Africans, the world won't exist. Without Africa itself, economy won't even exist. And I don't see why there's a reason why we can't build something up here for people that's up here. I look at all of us as we're right here. The only thing that stops us from being poor and rich is opportunity. And if we don't put opportunity in a place where there's less opportunity, people will never have the opportunity to be great. So I don't look at it as a standpoint of something that people can't afford. I know if I put it there, they're going to find a way to afford it because it's going to motivate them to be bigger than what they are now. And I think if we put ourselves in a situation to think that things that seem to be impossible is impossible, we'll never reach a goal outside of who we are. And I know I remember the time of history that I was taught when Africa controlled the world. We were kings, queens, richer than anybody you can ever think about. When you look at certain names that made people like Bill Gates live in projects, they had so much money. Because the resources were so rich and we just unfortunately aren't educated enough to know how to monetize those resources to our benefit. But ultimately, when you do and create an opportunity, people grow with that opportunity. People learn with that opportunity. People are motivated with that opportunity. So it may seem to be something of this nature today, but I guarantee you, you give an African a nickel, you give him five years with the right mind state, he'll turn that nickel into five billion. Because I'm a hustler, so I know how to flip a dollar. But I have the mind state to believe that I can do it. You guys are no different than me. I come from you, like we have the same blood. But the difference that I had was I went to the US and got motivated. I saw what you just had to, like I seen with my own eyes what man can accomplish. And to this day, people around the world is trying to figure out how the hell those Africans build those pyramids with no machines. Believe me, we have the capability. We just have to believe in ourselves enough to know that we can do it. So let's not discourage each other that the city's gonna come here and fail. Let's know that when the city comes here, it's coming to win, and I'm gonna need your support to do that. Thank you very much, Akon. I will end. Number one question, sir. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We will end Hello. here, because our guest has other engagement. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank um, you very much. Can you start on the COVID question, please? the COVID, how COVID could have affected oh, his investment? That's actually a very good question. Um, we did launch the announcement that we planned to build Akon City in 2018. So what you heard was the announcement that it was gonna happen. Then 2019, COVID actually hit. Um, it did affect a lot of planning.
and preparation. The piece that actually helped us and we were blessed was the fact that we weren't in construction. But everyone was working from home and through the offices, so we were able to continue to still get logistics, contracts, and things of that nature done. So it didn't affect us as much as it should have because of the timing of it. And I think, you know, God just had a better plan for us. So we actually got a lot more work done during COVID because we were able to focus on what was important. And now we're on the last bit of the soil studies in Senegal before starting construction in a few, you know, few months. So it actually helped us out. For Uganda, uh, COVID hopefully won't be an issue because we are currently at the tail end of it. So let's just pray that it doesn't get worse or another virus come to affect the process. But ultimately for us, the virus wasn't that much of an issue because of the things that we were doing wasn't contactual, if that makes sense. Thank you very much. We will end here. Shall we? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, oh, you, you ending now? All right, well, before we do, we do end, I do want to thank the president. I really, you know, Papa Mose put in a very good belief system in what I wanted to do here in, in, in Uganda. And I wanted to express that personally because, you know, coming from the United States, I get, you get so much. You get a lot of people saying a lot of things. Why Uganda? You know, he's this, he's that. And I'm sure everyone here gets it. And one thing I want to emphasize is that you guys live here. You know, I want you to really understand the role of government. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, we don't know the role of government. We depend on government to do everything. But government is just simply a system that regulates what you want to do and make things easier for what you need to do. You know, so, but at the end, the end of the day, the government is not going to do the work for you. We as a people have to put in the work. We have to go in and make it happen. And then the government's job is to open the doors to give it easier access for licensing, regulation, security, financing, things of that nature. But we have to go in and actually put in the work. You know, so ultimately, he showed his leadership towards me, opened the doors, put me with his whole administration. Everybody was very supportive. They're open.